I'm doing a physical exam on a dog, so the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of watch her from a distance, watch the way she's moving, and just get a general assessment of her behavior and her attitude. As I'm watching her, I'm just kind of looking at her general conditioning. Is she overweight or underweight? And the conditioning of her hair coat. Watching her mental attitude, making sure she's not lethargic or too out of it. So I'm going to start physical exam just getting some vitals. for any sores, masses in the throat, and tonsils, tongue, anything abnormal, irritated looking. So I'll write down her weight. And then I'm just going to kind of start at the front and I'm going to check gum color. So checking gum color. She's a normal pink color, and then our CRT, or our capillary refill time. Call that about one second. I'm making note of this in her chart as I go along. And then we'll take a temperature. Temperature is normal at 100. Then I'm going to get a heart rate and a respiratory rate. And I'm counting to calculate the heart rate. I'm counting for 10 to 15 seconds and then multiplying accordingly. If I get 10 seconds, then I'll multiply by 6, 15 by 4. So her heart rate is normal. At about 120, 120 beats per minute. And as I was listening to the heart rate, I'm listening for any abnormal beats, any sign of murmurs or irregular heart rhythms. And then I'm going to listen again, and this time as I'm listening, I'm going to put a hand on the femoral pulse, which is going to be under the back leg, and I'm just going to make sure I'm getting a pulse through the peripheral veins for every pulse of the heart also. So I'm getting a good pulse, and then while I'm listening, I'm going to listen to her heart sounds. I'm listening to the nine different fields in the lungs, uh, listening to the lung sounds for our points of maximum intensity. Just listening for at least one deep breath in each field. I'm listening for any crackling or popping sounds in the lungs, anything that would indicate difficulty breathing, any fluid in the lungs. 
every breath she takes so far has been really clean and really clear. Okay, so her lungs sound clean. I'm going to take her respiratory rate, do the same thing, counting for 10 seconds to 15 seconds. And her respiratory rate is also normal, about 40 breaths per minute. So then starting the exam, I'm just going to kind of work from head to tail. I'm going to start at the front, checking in the mouth. I've already looked at gums and gum color, uh, normal moistness, she's not dehydrated, not slimy gums. Now I'm just also looking at her teeth. She's minimal tartar. A little bit of an underbite that we can make note of, which is fairly common for her breed. And from there, I'm going to just keep working my way back, looking at the eyes, checking for any cloudiness, any sign of cataract, making sure her pupils dilate evenly. Her eyes look really clear. Seems to have no visibility problems. Keep going back, I'm going to look in the ears. Checking for any excessive debris, any signs of irritation that she's been licking in her ears or itching her ears. She's got a little bit of mild debris down in the ears, just a normal brown kind of waxy. Nothing excessive or abnormal, but would make note of that in her record. Same in the left, a little bit of brown waxy debris. Feel down the neck, making sure she doesn't have any sensitive spots in the neck or any lumps, bumps along the spine. Then do the same, kind of palpating the trachea, the windpipe. That doesn't induce any coughing. She feels normal. I can palpate lymph nodes under the jaw, mandible right here, which can be palpated even when they're not inflamed and they feel normal. Okay, so working my way down. I'm just gonna keep going down, checking. The leg, kind of range of motion, stretching forward, stretching backward, normal, no sensitivity. Feeling my way down, and then looking at the pads on her feet, in between the toes and the nails. Just looking for any sore spots, maybe hot spots if she's been licking, itching, which she appears to have none of. No lumps or bumps. Keep working my way down the back. Again, just checking for any soreness along her spine. And then just kind of feeling in her skin, any tumors and masses that we need to make note of. And then palpating the abdomen gently also. If she has any sensitivity, then you can kind of palpate for organs a little bit. Feel the bladder towards the back. Palpate any sensitivity in the intestines. She's pretty unresponsive. So keep working my way back and then down the back legs. I'm doing the same as the front, checking for any lumps or bumps in the pads and toes and on the nails. And then our range of motion for the back feet. Make sure she can stretch them all over. Good girl, she's got a good range of motion. Okay, she feels pretty normal. Looking on her back end, she doesn't have a tail, but there's nothing abnormal in the vulva or rectal area. And then if we can lay her on her side so we can see her belly, we can do feet away. And then I'm just checking, particularly the skin on the abdomen, she's got a little bit of a lump right here. I'm just under the skin, a sebaceous little mass on the abdomen just on the left side of the sternum, about a centimeter either direction. 
No sensitivity on her skin, no irritation or inflammation. That's what we're looking for. So I'm going to write down that she's got a small mass. Okay, and she can stand back up. Okay, so our physical exam is pretty good, nothing too much abnormal to note, a little bit of debris in the ears, that little lump that she's got next to the sternum. Overall, a good physical exam. Um, we can add to her record, make sure our doctor is notified of anything abnormal.